Hey guys, it's Grant Balfour here, ex-pitcher of the Tampa Bay Rays, Oakland Athletics, Minnesota Twins, Milwaukee Brewers, Cincinnati Reds. I just wanted to uh, say you're watching Matty C Sports for You and Me podcast. Enjoy the show. It's got a lot. Matty's got a lot of uh, great things to talk about. Wide range of sports. Get on there. I uh, hope to see you guys soon on the show. All right, guys. Take care. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. Coming in at 320 kilobytes per second, it's time for Maddie C's Sports for you and me. everybody Madison Sports sports for you and me i'm with the homie the party la fiesta what you want to call him this dude's a beast from orlando just won his title and he's ready to take more names in this shit and we, we're not gonna call it interim we're not gonna call it interim champion we're, we're gonna call it you know because i feel like no names lost his fight in a certain in a certain different area. Um, I will just call it ABC, uh, lost the fight there. So, I mean, I think you should have that belt completely, but here's Joe, the party Penafiel, And I know you're doing good tonight and I know you're doing good holding that title, man. Yeah. Um, I'm like super duper, uber happy. I'm very proud to be, uh, a champ, dude. It's like a long. It's a, it's been a long journey. Uh, it's it's almost like I always say it's been in my whole career, my whole life has led to all these moments and different fights. And I'm here to take over. It's uh, it's a party, and it's gonna continue to be a party every time I'm involved in any event or fight card. Uh, may it be prelims or pay per view one day for the U for the UFC or something crazy. I'm always gonna bring uh, ed like the edge of your seat type of action where you're biting your nails if you're going for me and you don't want me to get hurt and my hands are low and I'm running and I'm taking people down and they're slamming me and I'm slamming them and it's rolling and I'm flipping and we're punching and kicking and and if you're if you hate me then it's gonna be fun because you're gonna see me get hit. I take hits. I got a chin, uh, so it's a fun fight. I'm just, uh, like, like I said, I'm ready to take over, and it feels great to be the the Cage Titans champ. Well, much earned. It was a great fight between Lionel Boogs Young and yourself. Um, pretty back and forth. Um, I'd say it came into your favor in the later rounds. Um, at probably towards the middle, it started shifting gears, but still, still held on tight. Um, you know, and Boogs never, ever gave up. He had the heart of a line that night, and you you were just – your stamina is ridiculous. Like, it, you could still run at somebody, and you didn't even look tired. Like, and yeah. and it was just crazy. Like, see, I have to say that the move of the night for you was that fucking Superman dive you had that in <laughs> – uh, what was it, the third round, second round? Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> remember yeah I really did take a dive it's kind of dangerous but I think I, I uh, a lot of the stuff I do is dangerous and unpredictable and I'm doing it with like rhythm and like uh kind of catching people off guard really guys I, I feel like at a certain point they don't know what the fuck to do with me because I'm gonna come and I'm gonna hit you up and down and I'm gonna still attack you and try to take you down and just kind of 
what what you give me is what I'm going to work, but it's going to be sustained pressure and action throughout the whole time. Um, but yeah, I think guys get confused and uh, I'm able to trick them and, and Superman dive on these legs if I have to. <laughs> and, you know, I thought your ground game was, was good. And I thought that you guys both played the fence well. And, mm-hmm. you know, it got a little choppy here and there, you know, what was, what were you guys saying to each other like mid round? Like you guys would like circling, like you were like lions ready to fucking just attack each other, ready to go. Like what, what yeah, was the sayings up there? Dude, that, that fight was so cool, man. I really like, uh, some of these fights, it's like an outer body experience. It's fucking creepy. Like, well, I, I, I'm really, uh, happy enough to, to let go, uh, completely and be completely free almost for a, for those moments or those minutes or whatever <laughs> kind of cliche i think a lot of people say that but you can really see in the way i fight there's not a, a certain form I'm, I'm formless like bruce lee like water like he used to say if i need to crash i'll crash sometimes i flow and i roll um yeah man it's just uh so be- I think I, I fight different than some people. I think it's uh, have uh, a lot of my coaches will call broken rhythm. I'm not the best traditional dancer. Like I can't dance great, but I've always been able to learn wrestling and grappling and and maybe anything like kind of sports related, like mechanically really, really not easily. I'm not going to say that. I'm not like an NFL type athlete, but I'm a pretty good athlete in what I do. Like I can scramble and and I'm good. I've always been like that when I used to wrestle uh, when I was a young age kid. So it's fun, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. time to get paid. I need, I want bigger fish. Well, me and you talked a lot last night about certain, uh, certain situations of where you probably, what I think you'll probably go. And I said yeah. to you, Mohegan Sun. Now, usually Bellator runs Mohegan Sun. And that's yeah. it. And if anybody doesn't know, that's, was it in Cassville, Connecticut? And uh, so, like, you know, is that an option for you? Like, you don't give a fuck, like, go UFC or Bellator or PFL or, you know, anything like that? No, the name doesn't. It, it's, uh, uh, it's a, I'm a prize fighter, man. I'm hunting the biggest prize. And, and that's really what it is. If it's in Japan, if it's in Africa, if it's in El Salvador, at the moment, you know what I mean? Wherever they're going to pay travel, hotel, and uh, treat me well and pay me the way um, I think they're supposed to pay me and how we both come together and, um, you know, and negotiate, obviously, and feel what we both feel comfortable paying and getting paid for. Um, I'll go anywhere, but the price is going to be right. I, I'm, I'm really ready for uh, to step my level up and see where I'm at in the at the world level competition I've sparred with really um, with former UFC champions and, and different uh, big uh, guys are in the guys that find the UFC, just high level guys. And it's like, it's time for me to swim in the deep end. I've, I've always been in the gym, uh, like kind of like the underdog that, um, that everyone, uh, I don't know. How do I say it? It's like, uh, it's it's like I'm the crazy guy at the gym doing my kung fu shit on the side, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is going on?" But when it comes to <laughs> practice, I, I yeah, I like I, I I love like I love the the, the grind, and that came and still with me with the wrestling and my dad's work ethic of being an immigrant and a construction worker and all that blah 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 shit, working hard hours in the sun, but um. And that's the same way I bring to a practice, but with a smile on my face. It's like I enjoy when when they say, oh, my God, we're going to go do suicide or whatever the fuck. I'm like, I put a happy face on because that's when I know people are going to start quitting and, and the real dogs come out in the room. And that's why I always have shined. Um, in college, I used to wrestle for the UCF Wrestling Club here in Central Florida. We have fucking, it's, it used to be voted when Playboy actually was a thing. It was voted by Playboy as like the number one um, college campus for like hot babes back in like 2006. So that's what I used to always <laughs> tell people. I'm like, what's up? Because I graduated in 05. So I don't know. 
Yeah, what I'm trying to say is when I used to wrestle for the team, I used to go out drinking, and uh, a guy named Tom Lawler, he fought for the UFC. He was on, he was coaching the wrestling team a little bit. He was kind of like a mentor. He had graduated a year or two before and won a couple national titles. And I would come in, and it'd be a two-hour-long practice with all these college guys that were, like, supposed to be seniors or older than me guys, the whole team. And when it got to the very end, when everyone's breaking and there's sprints and after hours of wrestling – there was a dog in there and there was me, bro. I would just run. I would just keep the same pace, 80%, 90% the whole time. And, um, and that's what I bring to MMA, man. I, I'm a dog. I might not be the prettiest, but I'm, I'm the, I'm the type of guy that you can bring, bring to dinner and I'll behave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, I mean, like, like you said, like, so you went to UCF, uh, golden Knights, right? You know, the fake national champions or whatever they are. <laughs> Orlando, Orlando shit you know what I mean we're like fuck it we'll take the chip we'll make our own chip Orlando baby I'm kidding, <laughs> yeah they're crazy yeah. I love it yeah, yeah talk talk to me. <laughs> but it's funny because like like you said Florida is full of fucking mad talent for wrestling like wicked amount of talent and you know it goes down from from Miami down to way up to Jacksonville you know, like if there's some serious wrestling game up there and, you know, I mean, your, your game was pretty good that night too, with the wrestling stuff. And you had Lionel in pretty good, pretty good spots where he couldn't get out of. And, yeah. you know, he, he did his thing. And if it was a striking game, I, I, it might've been a different result, but the result yeah. for you was very positive And, you know, I thought it was a great fight. And, you know, the best thing I saw was you two in the second round. It was like, there was like two and a half minutes left and you both were going knee to body, knee to body to each other, like back and forth. I'm like, nobody in this motherfucker got a crack rib or nothing like shit. Like, oh my God. The yeah, kicks were great moment. in the first and second round. Holy shit. Yeah. I thought, I thought Boogs got you with a good one uh, in the first round. No, yeah, same thing. I think Andy said that in the commentator. Nah, he has long legs, and I was just like, it was the first one, so I was like, let me see where he's at. And it was like his foot kind of met me on my hands and the head at the same time as I turned. So like, if it was like a second before, or a second after, he would have cracked the fuck out of me if my hands weren't right there at that moment. But yeah, I was safe. Uh, but he's a great man. I had a. Uh, that's what I think, man. Like uh, the, the cool thing about fighting is like you always share a lot of pleasure and a lot of. Um, pain with these guys you know, even like the guys you fight like professionally or whatever it's like uh I'll, I'll always share uh something special in my heart for all the guys I've ever fought with because it's like you know what I mean they're like always gonna be like a brother to me in a way even yeah. though there's always a, a little bit of resentment from the from the losing side because I've lost before too so I know what it is like I'm like bitch let me try to get you one more time but um yeah I uh he, we had a great fight. He had a, so many good moments. He put me in bad situations. And that's the type of, but like I said, I think that's the type of fight me and him were, were able to give everyone. And I really appreciate uh, having a good dance partner. Um, he always like Muhammad Ali always got so much credit, I think, throughout his whole career. And then Joe Frazier was kind of left in the shadows a little bit. And yeah. it's yeah. it's kind of it's kind of stupid because it's not Muhammad Ali just having a great fight. Joe Frazier is the other side of that fucking great fight. But like the common people, I, I guess don't understand that, and uh, that's what makes it weird. So at the end of the day, it was like me and Lionel put on a great performance, and it was really one of my my better performances because Lionel, uh, I feel like came in with a good game plan, and he came re in really good shape. And I came with a game plan in really good shape. So it, it tended and it landed for a really tough fight. Like they were talking, like it was tough. Yeah. It was tough. A lot of grappling, clinching, knees. I head butted him one time because I got frustrated in the first round, at the end of the round, I think. So it was crazy. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was funny because, like, again, I'm seeing from both perspectives. I respect you guys because you both, like, introduced me to your, both your worlds, even though you both fought each other. And the, the funny thing was, is that I thought it was hilarious that you came, well, not hilarious, but you came out to shipping off to Boston, which is yeah. all well and good. 
but I forgot yeah. to tell you that during your fight, and it just reminded me of like Orlando for some reason, because then Guns N' Roses Paradise City came on, and I'm like, yeah. oh shit, it's like, it's like a <clears throat> perfect matchup for like towards the end of the fight, towards the beginning. I'm like, oh my god, they like Paul Vier must have meshed that together or something. <laughs> I, I don't know what like, happened. Well, what happened was I had like two or three songs I was gonna play, and I gave the Adam Russell. He fought uh, Andy, the, the the ring announcer. I think I cage signs fifty actually. In the I kick remember box. that. I remember that. So, yeah. so I gave Adam Russell like, here's a list. We were at the like at Main Street uh, Sports Bar and Grill over on the, on Main Street in Plymouth. Yeah, That's where yeah, he across the street. Yeah. Yeah. So like I was there. We were talking. I'm like, listen, I don't know what I'm gonna do. We just came up with a couple songs. It was fun, man. Like I said, I really, I wish I had more, uh, more fun to be able to do crazier, more lavish things like I have in my crazy head. But right now, I got to keep it rudimentary. But soon, sooner or later, the the, the walkouts and the entrances are gonna become even cooler. Like I'm, a, I'm not like. Sometimes I get to the point where I get to the fight, like for the books fight, I like I didn't give a fuck about anything. I like I didn't want to buy clothes for like the plane trip there. Like usually I'm like I'm gonna buy myself a nice little like a shirt or some shit to wear to the press conference. And I was like I am just ready to fight. And cause I I had been ready for like three weeks before that. I had been having these great sparring rounds with like some of the best guys around. And, like that's why. uh when Bugs and the people that thought Bugs were going to win, a lot of their predictions were like, oh, he's going to, like, oversize me and overpower me and use that kind of game that he tried to employ. But I knew, like, with my training partners, I have a guy named Lucas Alexander. I think he's, like, 7-2 and two or 7-1 and one or something like that. He just fought for Showtime Pettis at the main event here oh, in no Lakeland, shit. Florida. Yeah, just Lakeland, Florida. He fought this guy named Jacob Kilborn that fought in the UFC. He's like a local American top team guy. That sounds so man. Yeah, I've heard I heard yeah. the name before. I've heard the name. Yeah, yeah. My, my boy, my boy Lucas hit him with a in the first round, kicked him so hard he broke the kid's forearm, and then the kid was kind of like sh- shelled away, and the fight uh, and they stopped the fight. My dude supposedly ran through him. My my young line, they call him the line. So he's a 145er. I have guys like him. Uh, my friend Diego who fought Jay Perrin for the. The cage tie and strap, actually. This is why life is weird. My training partner fought for this belt, or the, or he didn't, I don't think it was for the belt. I think it might have been for either the belt or just fighting against Jay right before he fought cupcakes for the belt. But my yeah. friend that, yeah. that fucking lost to Jay uh, is now at CES about to fight Andre Sukumata for the title because Jay got the opportunity and he had a great fight over in the UFC. So he- hats off to him. But my, but that's how weird life works, man. Like that's how, that's how this game is, man. And it's like, yeah. it's so cool to be able to win this belt. And now my boy's about to catch the CES 135 belt. That means in my gym that we're going to have two of these belts. And in, in my opinion, the two top belts in fucking new England, like I'll, I'll take any of those fucking NEF or whatever the fuck. I'll clean those houses quick. But besides that, uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm real I'm real happy. And Lionel is a great opponent, and so has uh, so what's everyone like Richie? Like Richie's a fucking fire ass opponent, man. I'm always gonna have a special place with Richie in my heart because Richie and Lionel were were guys that really went at me. So did Pat. Pat and me had kind of a different kind of weird war. Gilbride, me and him had a little bit more of a different type of war. And then me and Bruno had like a weird floppy ass fucking slobber knocker. I feel like that, that was, was a, a good fight knocker. too. Yeah, it was a. I felt like that was a slobber knocker for some reason. Like you got two fucking Latinos going at it. It's gonna be fucking weird. And we're like different type of guys. And he fights different. He was throwing these wide hooks. He caught me a lot. Lionel, definitely out of all those guys, I guess Lionel had the the better striking but Richie I feel like really came through like with some fucking pressure man that kid was fucking crazy <laughs> well I think I think if I'm not mistaken if I, I was talking of books I think he he wants to he wants to go with Richie yeah I, I think, think Richie's so. fighting think someone so. someone really good next I forgot who a guy named like Johnny Lopez or one of those I don't know one of those guys from New England like one of those local guys that's tough or Jeff Perez, I don't remember. He threw a name like that at me. 
But Richie's a cool guy, man. I think Lionel's going to do well if he picks the fucking right fight and he takes his time. Um, yeah, all those guys, I, I wish the best for them. But, like, everyone, in, it's just a fight, and it's a career. We have to keep moving on and doing what's best for for our uh, our careers and our families. So Mike Heck got to you, right? So what what was the conversation with that? And I think that's going to be a big boost for you, too, you know, talking with him. I don't think too many people even saw it. I didn't even know about it. Like Mike Heck. I guess we got to be educated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Michael po- Michael Pover fucking messaged me with him in the group chat on Facebook, and I'm like, oh, this is just like another guy that wants to do an interview with me. I'm like, whatever. I like, I'll do an interview with him, and I'm like, I don't really know him, never met him, whatever. Like, he never sent me a message, and I was like, okay, whatever. So we talk like that, and then I'm like, we set it up, but those were the days that I fucked up and, like, missed my flight, I got snowed in, whatever the fuck happened those two, three days, and I got stuck in, in Boston, which was ended up being great. Me and my wife just got to chill. We I, remember, I remember your picture at, uh, we, on the airport <laughs> looking all, with your fresh Red Sox hat getting fucking snow all over it. <laughs> Bro. It was such a cool, like, I love being up there because it really does get hot. Like, it was 85 degrees today, like, hot. Like, your car's hot, you know what I mean? Like, the sun goes in when you go in your car, it's fucking, everything's hot. And it takes the AC, like, fucking, you know, it's like different type of problems. It takes the AC, like, a few minutes to get going. That's the only bad thing about Florida. It's like that year-round. Yeah, but we got the heat you got to get going, man. (laughs) We got to go the opposite shit. I like the cold, too, but. When it's fucking 12 degrees, it's fucking brutal. Listen, I want to give a big shout out to Regina's Pizzeria over in the North End in Boston. I ate there like when I got stuck over it um, for an extra extra day there. And it was so fucking awesome. It was one of the, I think it's been open since like 1926 or something I read. That's so the they had OG this, one. Yeah, it was just good food, oh, it's bro. Good. It's good really good, good food like the best pizza i've ever like so, like probably the best pizza i've ever had most authentic and shit so big ups to them <laughs> well if it was you know like that's where me and my wife used to go for like bruins and celtics game and shit because it's right out there Stop. and it's yeah. fucking dope you know like they got good food and don't get it right away you burn your fucking mouth off but it's good shit you're right. They they bring that pie at you like steaming hot as soon as that bitch gets it done. They brought it to me. And they got so many little options. I was like, yo, they got so I like that that they have so many like sixty different type of pies. They're like, you know what? They'll find the right one you like. They got one of these motherfuckers you'd like the toppings on. So. Yeah, man. I mean, so now my big thing for you is where does the party go from here, bro? Where's he going? Uh, are, man, you on va- do- are you on vacation again <laughs> no vacation man there's no like i don't know man i it's really um it's sad to say but i'm a fucking i love to be at the gym for the most part it's really become like a safe place for me uh it's like as corny as it sounds i i'll go there and i'll just go there and park my car and smoke and, like, i know I you know told no me gonna, yeah yeah <laughs> no one fucks with me there you know, no one's gonna say shit to me. It's, it's, it's a place where I, I can go. And then sometimes I'll smoke. I'll just have jeans on, and I'm like, you know what? I wasn't gonna work out, but I'm in the mood to hit the bag or the aqua bag a little bit. I'll put my gloves on and I'll go in there in regular ass clothes. It could be nice clothes because I'll be going to work or something, getting ready. Pa 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 pa. Hit that shit. <laughs> and just, uh, it, I'm just able to be a kid in there. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm really thankful to have them in my life. I teach the wrestling intro uh, to to wrestling for kids at 9:30 at uh, on Saturdays. Me and Bubba, Bubba Sheffield. Respect. So we 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 yeah we we teach the kids kids wrestling class. It's it's fun, man. But yeah, that's the biggest thing I love about being at my gym. And a lot of people that come visit my gym get those vibes. It's like a real Florida vibe. We got tons of athletes, dudes and legends like Leota Machida, um, Ronaldo, Jacare Souza. Uh, former UFC con- uh, title contender and, and tons of different other guys like Rodolfo Vieira, Phil Rowe, Anna Goldie. Those guys are all in the UFC right now. Uh, man, too many people to name. Uh, Shorty Torres fucking comes by sometimes with uh, to, uh, with some of his buddies. And 
different people come in from all over the place all the time. Guys from One FC. That's it's sick. just nice to have. Yeah, it's just nice to have. A, Orlando has a nice vibe because Miami's getting so overpopulated that we get now the the more international guys and guys are kind of more chill. I I feel like there's nothing to prove here. We're not going to be recording everything and making you guys get on the highlight film because you're a new guy at the gym and we need to knock your block off. It's more of a, I'm not going to say down South Florida bullshit, but it is. It's like good old boy kind of shit because the yeah. part of Florida we're located is, is not Miami. We're not in the inner city. We're outside of Orlando in the Southwest part of Orlando where it's a little bit more country. You got big trucks rolling around. You feel me? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? People like to drink lean and smoke uh, and smoke uh, backwoods and it's a different type of vibe out here. You know what I mean? People are out here just the Florida vibe, man. You see fucking uh I don't know, iguanas and shit. You go to the river, we have Wakaiva Springs, you know, you, you do Florida shit out here. You go to the trail. Um but yeah, it's 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 cool, man, and I, I hope more and more people start seeing Orlando as a as a spot where you can come, take your children, train, build a family here. There's a lot of uh, areas around Orlando where you can have a nice family and suburban life uh, and be away from the city. And Orlando's not a big city. It's like fucking two blocks. So it's, it's not a big city. You know what I mean? Uh, Some people are like, one city. fucking like, highway. New- yeah, it's not New York. You know what I mean? We're not going to like all this fucking cool shit. It's, it's just a fucking couple roads. But yeah, I, I don't know what's going to be up next for me, man. I really want the UFC, 1FC, whoever. Uh, my managers really think that I'm going to get a, a, a contender series call for the UFC or maybe a straight call. Um, I don't know. I'm not God. And then the other thing is people might uh, – we have a good connection with PFL. Uh, we, have a good, we have a good vibe with a couple people. But those are the two main hitters that we have a connection with now. But um, – who knows? Who knows, man? I'm always gonna be fighting for Michael Pover on the regional scene. Mm-hmm. I've definitely made a I made a decision about that where uh, I'd rather fight for someone that I know and I trust is there, not trying to like pinch pennies and and I don't know. And this Mike's just the guy I, I trust, bro. That guy. He, we don't even do contracts anymore, man. Me and him just do a handshake type of deal over the phone. And we're like, yeah, that sounds good to you. That's cool. Boom, boom. We go. That's it. There's no, and we all, we both live up to our word and our ends of the, the contract or whatever you want to call it. And, and that's it. I love that about Mike, man. I and, and when I need something, he helps me out. Sometimes promoters and, and, and they're not there to fucking help you out, but Mike Pover is there to help you out he'll fucking he he drove one of my opponents before to the to the commission to get his license like not like he had a problem with his medicals or something like that and they needed to get it straightened out mike bovert drove him over there to to help him out so it, it yeah. is what it is man that's my dog and i'm gonna ride with him if he needs me to fight king kong i'll fight king kong but we're gonna put on awesome shows and uh, you'll definitely see me in the cage, Titans cage, before you see me in any other regional promotions cage. And beside, and then after that, like I said, it's gonna be big shows. So I, I know my 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 boss man will give me the blessing. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, Paul Vez, from the guy who's selling soda to the fighters to to me. Paul Vare is a dude who who's a class act to every fucking person that goes and promotes and does whatever. So more, I got a lot of respect for him too. And yeah, pro, pe- some promoters, people, people, some promoters people, suck. People don't, dude. People don't understand. You should see my friends in Florida, bro. People are starving. Like fighters are starving for fights. And when you meet someone that like sees your work and says, "This kid is nuts," that's fucking. Give him a fucking camera. Let him fight. Give me. And I never asked for easy fights. Who did I fight? I fought their their better best guys. I've, I will continue to fight only dogs and guys from fucking any any part of the world. The West, the Russians, whatever. I I'll fight whoever. But I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be going against fucking E. Like I don't like easy guys. Isn't like a thing I'm going for. I'm going like yo, bring me who you got. And the throw. Oh, he's a black. Okay, bring him. Bring him. He's a boxer. Okay, bring him. Let's let's see what happens. Yeah, talk shit. 
but um and mike 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 understands that and he really he, uh some promoters like like you said they're pieces of shit too at the end of the day these yep. promoters want to make as much money as they can and drag fighters which it's part of the game guys they're going to go into the into that organization to be an opponent for a guy that's supposed to win and you're the b-side and i've been there all my career a lot of the time and you got to win you know it's on your your duty to win but it's stacked against you and sometimes the thing that the promoter does is nasty you know what i mean like not letting you oh, yeah. into your hotel room to a certain amount of time even though you've been in the airport and been in the city for so long and blah 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 and you need to cut away well, you got to eat shit. This is how we do things. Boom. Ba, 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 ba. So many things. You know what I mean? But that's what you deal with. And uh, I'm just thankful. And I don't know if Destiny, God, or the universe brought me and them together. But we have a cool thing going. And uh, I'm, I'm really thankful for it. And I'm thankful for him, his family, the Cage Titans family, and everyone that's ever um, helped out, you know, in any type of form or way. Well, I know that success is coming for sure that fucking belt around your shoulders gonna be dope for a while it's it's been a lucky belt man i mean the last guy that held this just went to the ufc and fought fucking mario bautista who had who had that who had six fights in the ufc now he's five and one when he when he uh after this last weekend's fight but come on and before that, I mean, how many guys have held that belt and gone in the UFC? So I can't wait. I mean, if it, like I said, if it happens, it happens. But um, more than anything, I'm ready to fucking uh, go in the lab. Right now I'm going into a reload phase where I'm going to reload and sharpen up some areas that I feel need to be sharpened and fill in some holes and add some uh, more layers and foundation and some more rockets and some more bombs, and some more napalm fucking, some more units, you know what I mean, some more cavalry, I need to add some more cannons to this ship, uh, there's a couple things I'm, uh, I'm not, maybe I'm not missing, but maybe I need to get reinforced, a lot of, a lot of things, so, jujitsu, everything, and, uh, it's gonna get better, and you're gonna see a better version of me next time you're out, it's gonna be crazier, it's gonna be more, more uh more of a chaos than it ever was before because I'm, I'm coming to win and right now i have like uh i really i feel like i have a strong spirit and i have the momentum going on my side and uh can't wait really to for sure if, I, if it's gonna if, it might be like like i said stay tuned hopefully something big i might even do a bare knuckle fight if it happens and we'll see trying well, to see who's behind <laughs> I always got this Florida man. You never know what's going on. <laughs> I was like, "Who the fuck behind me, man?" Oh my god, damn it! We got lots of neighbors around here, but uh, I have to smack some people. No, I'm kidding. Well, Joe, the party. Yeah. I don't even like to call you Joe. I like to call you the party. Penafiel. This dude's a fucking yeah. beast. You're gonna see him on TV. You're gonna have the walkout, like I told you, from Orlando. This. I'm going to dedicate this uh, show to my cousin died on the 25th. Um, what was it? 2014. So rest in peace, Jay. Um, yeah. So we will see you again and fuck man. Can't wait to see what else happens with you, bro. And tell Tina and the kids hello. And yeah, it was good to meet her that night. And, you know, I can see the real true connection you both have. So, um, yeah, I can't wait till y'all come back, man. <laughs> Fuck shit up. That's why I tell all the yeah, fighters the best way to say shit. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see you guys again and see you again, brother. And we'll fucking definitely stay in touch when you come into town. And to everyone, uh, all my New England fans, just know that I'm coming in harder and I'm coming in crazier. I'm hoping to get new new outfits, new gimmicks, and new crazy things I want to bring to the party. I want everyone, next time I might make it a costume party. I'm going to invite everyone to bring a costume to that bitch, okay? Or make it a like masquerade it. ball. You never know what's going on with the party. And if the boss man allows it, we'll do it, okay? You know, I might drive a tank into that bitch. You never know. And to all you people, now, if you do remember, you all thought, 
Penafiel was the enemy. You all thought he was, oh, he's he fucking sucks. He's a jerk. Well, he's winning now and he's a he's the shit. And now you fucking realize now he's a he's a good shit and he'll fuck shit up. So congratulations, you fair weather motherfuckers. <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah, to all you fair weather motherfuckers, uh, you guys suck ass, but I love you too, man. I love the hate as much as I, I more than I love the love, because love is fake a lot of the time. But the hate is real. I love the hate, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, the party, Penafee out. Check them out. Oh, where can they follow you, bro? Dude, just follow me on Instagram. Just put Joe the party. You'll see a guy with a cowboy hat drinking beer out of a shoe. Um, and check me out on Cage Titans. If you go to YouTube, just put Cage Titans, and you'll see Joe the Party. And I have a lot of my fights on there, uh, my last four recent fights. So check us mm-hmm. out, man. Subscribe and follow both me, Cage Titans, you, Maddie C, and everyone else. All right. Love yes, y'all. sir. And uh, you want to give a shout out to my show, like you're watching Maddie C Sports for you and me, like you're Joe Penafiel. Oh, listen, you're watching the Maddie C Show with the party, the one and only. We're here live from Orlando. This ain't the weather, man, but this is the rocket, man. And when I come to fight, I bring these rockets here from Orlando, Florida, baby. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I love you <laughs> Thanks, guys, brother. man. Maddie C, I hope you love that, brother. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Thanks, Joe. And th- thank you for coming on, brother. And right, I'll homie. see you down there in April, motherfucker. <laughs> Soon, soon, man. All right, man. Enjoy the show. Thanks for watching Maddie C's Sports for you and me. Make sure to follow Maddie Cameron on Twitter at MattCameron23 or follow him on Instagram at MattyC23 or subscribe to his YouTube channel, Maddie C's Sports for you and me. Once again, thanks for watching. 